welcome Math 20-3 to Trigonometry Lesson 4.2 so, Trying to solve complex problems in the real world. Now what I've got for you is some situations where you're going to see some homework style questions here and we're going to look at how to solve things. Um, that involve two triangles. These are without context, and then we'll move on to ones that have situations where you could use two triangles to solve uh, information that's not given. Let's begin here. Uh, I have this double triangle stack, um, and we can arbitrarily pick anything we don't know uh, given the context. Essentially, I think a simple question would be like, solve the length Let's move my little key all the way to solve for CD. Okay? The length. Alright. CD. Well, that's supposed to stretch out. There we go. Solve for the length CD. Alright. So, um, we can see the triangle CD is a right triangle and it's connected to the lower triangle um, through this line, and I'm in red, I'm in black, I'll just do a little bit of red, uh, squiggly here, like, this is the one, like I said before in the previous lesson, if you can find out the common length between two triangles, um, that will help you solve the parts you need for the other one. Okay, so the first task is to say, okay, how can we solve that unknown, and how is it related to the information we have two pieces? So the first thing, do it in blue, find a triangle, that has two pieces of information. Okay, and that's going to be this. There's a piece and a connected piece over here. Okay, so we have an angle. And according to that, it is the, we also have the opposite. And the information that we need, so there's, we have that. Two pieces and the third piece is the hypotenuse. Okay, relating these two pieces of information, opposite and hypotenuse, we would employ the sine function. So we'd say it's sine of an angle over 1 equals opposite over hypotenuse. Sine of, now this has got 47 degrees over 1, and the opposite's 4.2, and we don't know what that common length question mark is up there. As we said before, this is much better to be a number, which we can put here. Uh, we can use our calculator. I guess I should uh, employ that uh, using a basic scientific calculator. And we'll make that always on top. Coming up, always on top. All right. So we'll use that one here. Uh, and we want sine 47. So in a scientific calculator, we type in 47, take the sine of that, and sufficiently we'll take four decimal places from there. And we were last in red. Let's go blue. 0 0.731. And the last digit rounds up to 4. Over 1 equals 4.2. All right, so the process again, we're going to use proportional reasoning. We're trying to go from 0.73 to 4.2. I don't know how that gets there, so i got to find the multiplier. Again, how do you find the multiplier? Take the bigger number on the right, divided by the number you have on the left. Okay, so 4.2 divided by 0 0.7314. So it suggests that if we multiply that by, f whoops, that was weird. A little glitch there, 5.742, we'll get 4.2. So 1 times that very same number times the 5.742, we will get the question mark. And I'll just say, it's just keep a couple of decimal places for now, that it's 5.742 for now. Okay, and let's go check the units, as it were. Uh, this is in centimeters, so that must be centimeters. And what that is, is the length of this triangle part here that I scribbled in red. So we can now safely assume, carefully at least, that that 
squiggly line or that hypotenuse of that triangle here is 5.74. So we can claim that this is 5.74. Move that over here. So now we got two pieces of information on the triangle here on the upper triangle. I'm just going to redraw it a little bit so it kind of flips out. I'm literally going to go and just sort of like rotate it down like that. It's hard to see from this perspective, so I'm going to slide it over here. I'll hide that guy for later. Okay, so I'm just going to draw this triangle. I'm rotating it over. So there's this, there's that. There's that little piece here. There's the right triangle. There's the right angle. And now labeling of information. This is the 26 degrees about here. And then the hypotenuse is 5.742. And we're asked to find the length. Uh, I think D was here. C was here. So what's this one? We look at the triangle now. We have the angle. There's the angle. And we have the hypotenuse of that triangle. Whoa. Th weird. Hypotenuse we've got. And this is the angle. This is the information of the side length between the referent angle and the right angle, which is the adjacent. Okay. So the relationship between those two is cosine. So we're going to try to solve the side lengths. So it's got cosine of an angle over 1 equals adjacent over hypotenuse as per your formula sheet. So cosine of 26 degrees over 1 equals the adjacent. We don't know. We'll put a question mark there. And the hypotenuse is about 5.742. We'll keep a couple decimal places till the very end. Okay. All right, so again, that cosine 26 is not a friendly thing to work with, so we're going to find out what is this as a decimal. Okay, now, trying to find cosine 26, so we say 26, take the cosine of it, and we'll use about four decimal places, so 0 0.898, and that 7 jumps up to an 8, over 1 equals question mark, over 5.742. Since we have numbers that pair up on the bottom, so we can go left to right, how do you go from 1 to 5.742? Well, times that by 5.742. Times that by 5.742. And that will equal our unknown length that we're looking for. Since I've got this in the calculator, I'm just going to use that here. I'm going to times that by 5.742. 742, whoops, backspace. And lo and behold, that worked out. That's about 5.16, so about 5.2, and the units were centimeters. Okay. Let's move up over here. I'm just going to raise my annotations if I can. Bam. Yes. All right. Move this guy down here. We can zoom in a little bit. Slide that over. Okay. So here's an unknown question where we have don't even have instructions because I just simply grabbed some screenshots from one of my textbooks here. And we have a couple pieces of information. I can tell that we got two over here on the right. So I should ask a question, or any one of the questions, of something over here. It could be anything. Okay? So I basically do, I have an angle, so I should probably find one of the side lengths. It doesn't really matter which one we work at. Um, in this one, I'll just say, hey, what's the distance between X and Y? Or sorry, X and W. I'm looking at Y, saying the wrong one. X, W. So what do I mean by that? I want to know... Simple little question mark. How big is that dimension of this little triangle here? In all of these questions, you want to find the joining side length, and there it is. Okay, and then if we can get that information, we'll have two pieces on the other side, and if we have two out of the three of the triangle, we can solve any pieces we want. Okay, so let's take a look at solving this side length. 
from the given information. I'm going to make this a little bit thicker so you can follow along. We have a referent angle here. Bam, 20 degrees. The 8.4 is the hypotenuse. And it looks like this is the opposite. So the relationship between the opposite and hypotenuse, we would use the sine function. Sine of an angle over 1 equals opposite over hypotenuse. So you say sine 20 degrees equals, oh, we don't know what the opposite is. Put a question mark there. Put a variable if you want. Over 8.4. Well, again, we have numbers. We're going to go from left to right. We're going to have a 1 to 8.4. So we know we're going to have to multiply this in the end by 8.4. But we don't know what this is. But we have but in the end, we're going to multiply that by 8.4. Well, what is this? This being, what's sine 20? No clue. So let's make it a number that is usable. You can use your table. Uh, of reference that we have. You can look up 20 degrees and find the sine value. Should you so choose, you can do that. Or you can use a scientific calculator. 20 sine 0 0.342 0. Put that over 1 equals question mark over 8.4. And we know we got to take that and times that by 8.4 as per the previous statement above. And so what will this length vertically up and down be? I've got my calculator times that by 8.4. And that length up and down, the y to w, is approximately 2. Point. We'll keep a couple decimal place precisions. 8, 7, and we'll round that 2 up to a 3. And that should be good enough, approximately. That's half the battle right there. And so now we've got a triangle on the left-hand side. I'll switch over to black and redraw that little black triangle so it's a bit bigger to draw your attention to what we're looking for here. Whoops, what just happened there? Don't know. Draw the line, draw the right triangle. Okay, switch to information here. It says this is 22 degrees. I need to get a little bit more precise, 22 degrees. We just found this out to be 2.873. And the units for this question was, I totally forget, oh, it's centimeters. Okay. So I'll zoom in, type in centimeters there, or at least write it out. And remember, the question was for this one, how big is that distance at the bottom? All right. So that's what we have to work with. I'm going to switch to blue because I like working with the blue ones. So we have an angle, check. And we have a measurement between the angle and the right angle, that being the adjacent. And now we're looking for this one, which appears to be, if you look at the referent angle, it points to the opposite. OK, so now we look at our chart, or rather our formula sheet that says, how do we work with opposite and adjacent? If you forget, dramatic. tangent of an angle over 1 is the relationship of opposite over adjacent. Yay! Alright, so we have tan of 22 over 1 equals opposite we don't know, and the adjacent happens to be 2.873. This is what we're going to work with from 1 to the 2.873 by multiplying that by 2.873. Uh-oh. I don't know what I'm multiplying by because I have no idea what tan 22 is. So we convert that into a decimal value, the ratio for tangent of 22. And I'm still in red, so that's going to be like this. 22, take the tangent and find the approximate decimal. We go to four decimal places, 0 0.404 and 02, so it's about, about 0 over 1 equals question mark over 2.873. Again, trying to get from 1 to 2.873, as we said. So we're going to take this 0 .4040, and lo and behold, we're going to multiply that by 2.873. So here I am on calculator. I have that 0 .4040 with all its precision. 
times 2.873. And that little distance here, which we like the question mark, which is just this thing here, is about 1.16 or roughly 1.2 centimeters. Okay, so there's two uh, non-context-based questions we're looking for uh, side lengths. Uh, I think none of the ones I have, for examples, have solving for angles, I don't think, because they're primarily given. All right, let's move across here. Now I know you've got a situation in your homework practice where it's the classic questions of guy, wi guy wires on flagpoles or any sort of pole and they want to ask you certain questions about uh, lengths between or uh, values uh, that you could use trigonometry between in information. Now see with this question it's kind of weird in the fact that you might actually want to look at these things in a different perspective. When you see it, I'm actually going to do this. Whoa, because I can. When you see a guy wire question like this, where they're typically a flagpole, you might want to turn it sideways mentally. Okay, and why do I do that? Because I'm going to draw these things separately as one triangle on the right and one triangle on the left. Okay, you may want to see what? Okay. Here we go. Here's one triangle. There's that 15 here. Here's the one that's going out to the right. And I'll put this at 45 degrees. Okay. And I'll say that's going to the right. And I'm going to make this one go to the left because I can. It can just swing to the left. Grab a little line and here. And then that one's going to swing 35 degrees to the left. This is 45 to the right. And I can still make this pole a little longer if I want to, hypothetically, just by drawing a little line. And we know that both of these are 15. This length here is 15 meters. This might be a better way to see the two triangles and how they're connected. Okay. And often the question really is, is... What is the distance between the two wires on the pole? Or another way to look at it, if you've got this length of the wire from the pole, we'll call that A, and all of this one B, here's A, here's B. Often the question is, how much bigger is B than A? That's really, that's really what the question is. So if you can do that, you can just simply solve for both of them, find out which one's bigger, hint, hint, B, and you just take away the A value. So let's go and do that. I'm going to slide this over here. That's one way to approach the question. I could, if that's totally messing you up, I can go right back and say, okay, that's a really bad idea. Another approach, click, whoops, not a race, select, rotate, back up to zero. Okay, maybe this is a, qu oops, I don't know what's doing here. Maybe that's just messing you up that way, and you might want to see the fact that you could also draw one of these triangles just like this. Oops, probably not the best idea to do red. Here's my pole, okay. I can draw one triangle on the left at 45 and I can just simply swing this to the other side and say okay there we go oops that's pretty bad if I undo that I can probably match this up a little bit better here okay there we go um, I still can swing it to the other side uh, and saying that this distance from the pole to this point is 15 And so is this, because that point here is 15, 15, and this one's just simply taller at 45 degrees, and this one is only at 35 degrees. 
And again, we've got the idea where if this is A, and this whole length is B, all the way up here, the often the question you get asked is, how much taller is A or B than A? Or this little height difference here. That's a typical type question you get. So again, I'm just going to do that this way because maybe it's a bit better. Uh, we will make it a simple assumption that hasn't been given. We will assume. That's a bad color for that particular picture. We're going to make a really big assumption. We're going to assume it's a right angle. And we're going to assume that's a right angle here because that has not been provided for us in the diagram. And sometimes they don't even provide that. We'll assume it's a right angle. Therefore, we can carry on with our trigonometry that we're familiar with. Okay, let's clear everything off the screen, switch the color to blue, and say, okay, let's figure out B first, because it's the bigger one. doesn't really matter. We have an angle, and this one is the adjacent. And lo and behold, B is the opposite. Hint, hint, by the way, here's another angle. Here's its adjacent, and A also happens to be its opposite. So we're going to basically be using the same trig, just using different numbers because we have opposite and adjacent. And if we remember from just the last question, tangent of an angle relates the opposite and the adjacent. I'll be sure to use the letters. So we got tan 45 over, fifth, over 1 equals the opposite, B. And I'll even write that in red so it stands out a little bit more obvious. B, back to blue over the adjacent of 15. So we know we're going to get from 1 to 15 nicely because that's going to be times 15. And we're going to take the tan of 45, whatever that is, and we're obviously going to times that by 15. Okay, cool. Let's figure out what tan of 45 is using the calculator. Put that in. All right, so 45, tangent, oh, 1. So that's a 1 over 1 equals B. I'll use the blue for, oh, uh, whatever, I'll use red. B, back to blue, 15. Hmm. 1 to 1, 1 times 15. B, 1 times 15. <gasps> Look at that, B is 15. And it happens to be meters. It's the taller amount. Yay! Okay, now let's figure out what A is. It's pretty good to think about that right now, that A should be shorter, or our answer should be smaller than 15. I guess I can move to the right a little bit now. Okay. So here we're now going to look at the triangle, and I'll work with green this time, so it looks a little bit different. We're referring to this triangle here with all our opposites and adjacents now. Again, we have tangent of an angle over one opposite over adjacent. It's always good to write out the formulas every time. Tangent of 35 over 1. Opposite is A. Well, this time we don't know what that is. It's A, though. Over the adjacent, 15. So again, we're going to be multiplying by 15. So now we got to figure out what tan 35 is. Using our calculators a fast way, you can also use the table that I've given you, 35, find the tangent, 0 0.7 roughly, back to green, 0 0.7, 0, 0, 002, over 1 equals A over 15, and we're times that by 15, times that by 15. I'm going to go ahead and do that now to figure out what A is, so times 15, and we'll round to the nearest whole number about 10. Oh, 10.5 roughly. Seems pretty good that we can round right there to 0.5. Okay, that's the value of A, 10.5 meters. Well, basically, we have established that we have a 15 meter height for B and a 10.5. What's the difference between them? We just have to subtract them in the end. Okay, so the height is B, take away A. 15 meters, take away 10.5 meters. If you need the calculator, go right ahead.
4.5 meters is the difference of height of those wires. Okay, moving along. Okay, we got a couple different scenarios here. Uh, I'm going around this way, down to here, these classic building questions. Okay, uh, you're going to have some uh, diagrams that kind of look like this. Anyway, 25 minutes, okay. This is going to be a longer one, I guess. Okay, so we have these two building classic questions, which are two triangles, and they're often separated by two buildings. And often the question is, how tall is this entire building on the taller one? Okay. Now, notice that this 39 can be assumed to also be here from this distance to this distance. All right, again, we have a two triangle situation which is drawn for you. We're going to first look for what is that distance that connects the two between them. So if I was to draw the triangle out really quickly yet again, whoops, that's a not a spectacular drawing. I've got this one here, this one here. There we go. It's 42 degrees and 39 meters. And we're asked, what's this question? Or what length is that between them? I'll pick a different color, say here's the reference angle. There it is. And we're going to assume that this is square. This is the opposite. And the measurement that we're looking for is between the reference angle and the right angle. So that is the adjacent. And as we had in the previous question, the the relationship between adjacent and opposite is tangent. So we're going to figure out this angle first by using tangent. So number one, we're going to use tangent. So tangent of an angle over one, we're using side lengths, is opposite over the adjacent. Okay, and 10, 42 degrees over one, Opposite, we know is 39. And this time we do not know the adjacent. Hmm, we're looking for that. Okay, well, we're going to have to multiply that by something, but it's going to come from up here. Don't know what tan 42 is, so we're going to use the calculator and tell us what that is approximately. Okay, all right, so 42, take the tangent. It's about 0 0.9990004 over 1 is 39 over some unknown length here. Trying to go from a small number to a big number, don't know how. Take the big number, divided by 0 0.9044. Yeah, divided by 0 0.9004. So, 39 divided by 0 0.9004. Sure. That's the multiplier to get Across. So for about 43.3, we're going to keep a few decimal places precision for our final answer. So it's about 43 point, and I'll keep the 314 because that's good enough precision for later on. Okay, and that currently is meters. So now we're established that this is about 43 here going across. And all we're going to figure out this height here now and then tag it on to 39 to figure out total height. Okay, if we take a look at this triangle, I'm going to zoom right in here. It's going to get blurry. Ooh. Okay, I'm going to do a little bit of erasing, just so I can write it nice and cleanly here. All right, I'll thin out the eraser. This is now 43.3, I think it was. This is this distance right here. We don't know what this is. Okay, we have a reference angle, and we have an adjacent. And this is the opposite. Okay, so we're going to work with that opposite, adjacent, and an angle. Again, that's a tangent. And I hope that was, yeah, it was 43.3. It's up there. Haha. -ha. I'm going to work in the blue space, just right there. Hopefully it's not too thick of writing. Okay, so tangent. That's a little thin. I'll work a little bit thicker, okay? Tangent of that angle over 1 equals, don't know, opposite 
over adjacent. We got to make sure we know which one's which. So tangent of 31 degrees over 1. Opposite, we don't know. Question mark. And adjacent's about 43.3 from our previous calculation here. So in the end, once we figure out 1 to 43.3, which is times 43.314, I think it was. Yeah, right? Right up there, yeah. 43.314 to get there. So we need to take tangent of 31 and times that by 43.314. And we'll have our answer for that little bit of height here. So let's figure out what tangent of 31 is. Oh no, we lost it on the screen. But okay. That's why we write things down. Tangent of 31, which is take 31, take the tangent of it, and it's about 0 0.6009. 0 0.6009. Over 1 equals some number. 43.3. Remember, we're trying to multiply these both by 43.314. So we take our 0 0.06009, or whatever unrounded it is, times 43.314. And it says this little height of this triangle here is approximately 26. And we'll even say 0 0.0 meters. Okay. Now it's going to look really small. That's okay. So that little triangle is 26, this is 39. We can now figure out the total height of the building, which is by adding those two numbers up. And we have to show that somewhere. So H is 26 plus 39. Hmm, I'll just do some actual manual addition. 6 and 9, 15, 5, and 6 meters. Woohoo! 65 meters. All right, we're at 31 uh, minutes of length of this particular video. I'm going to stop it and do a part two because it's going to get a bit more complicated. We'll see you in a bit.